Good. So, so let's get into some of the some of the recent writing that you've done. Um, I've I've read both of your articles in Commentary Magazine. I thought I thought they were uh, they were excellent. And you've taken on in the last it seems like in the last couple of years you've taken on the whole Black Lives Matter, the whole issue of race relations. Um, your your article last year uh, in Commentary was an open letter to Tennessee Coates who is probably the most well-known um, black intellectual uh, commenting on, black, on, on race relations in America right now and very famous, very well-known. Uh, and uh, although I, I, I guess he was called a neoliberal by uh, Cornel West. So uh, um, within, the, within the nutty Marxist uh, ac academic world, he is considered a little bit too far to the right. Um, but Tennessee is kind of is the big name today. So tell us a little bit about what motivated you to write this open letter to Tennessee. Maybe what what does Tennessee say about race relations, and and what is your experience, and what what, what do you what do you think of what he says? Well, I, you know, I had fallen in love with America long before I, I I got here. America for me was this amazing country. That so what made you fall in love, given your socialist background? What made you fall in love with America? Well, I, had a, I went to high school at 11 years old. In the typical British fashion, you start high school at 10 or 11. So my educational background was, was very, very advanced. And I had studied American history very, very carefully. Um, I, had, I had come to America uh, periodically as a child and, and had uh, in the late 70s, the early okay. 80s, and read a lot about America and just knew that this was a country of amazing opportunities, a country that, in spite of seemingly intractable problems, it was a country that race was not, at least at the time that I was thinking of coming here, race was not um, a, a phenomenon that could determine your destiny. That we had had what I call a third founding in the 1964 civil rights passage, yeah. right? What was, race, what was the attitude towards race in Jamaica? Hmm? What was the attitude towards race in Jamaica? Well, race in Jamaica, there's, we don't have a racial taxonomy. So it's based on pigmentocracy. So we don't have a one drop rule. So like, my, you know, my, grandma, my grandmother's uh, father was a, was a Sephardic Jew who married uh, a, a, a Jamaican woman huh. uh, of East Indian background. So he, for all practical purposes, was, was, was Jewish. And my, uh, on my father's side, uh, my grandmother was English and her husband was Jamaican. And uh, so I come from a very multi-ethnic background. Yeah. So I was considered like a brown man. Okay. I was never considered, it was not until I came to America that I discovered I was black. Okay. <laughs> so and what, are the, what are racial relations like in, in, um, in Jamaica? Is it a big issue? Is, is the pigmentation, does it matter? Or is it just, you know, is, is it just insignificant? It's more an issue of class. It's it's really an issue of class. Uh, they're, 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 the, the, well, going back to slavery, the lighter skin you have, the more likely it was that you were emancipated from the plantations and that you have received a better education from your from your master, so to speak. So the big divide there really is a class divide um, and less than race. But um, so I, I had fallen in love with this country and, and upon arrival, this love continued to increase. Um, I just saw America as an amazing republic that um, was the best place for a black person to be, the best place for an immigrant, that it was, it had the capitalist system that I had valorized in my late teens uh, through Ayn Rand, I'd, I'd start my, you know, I'd, I don't, I don't want to say I, I, I drank the Kool-Aid, but I saw in reason, because I prefer to say I saw in reason, not only the economic benefits, but the morality of capitalism. And, uh, you know, I read Rand's essay on what is capitalism in, uh, um, in the, in the not an ideal. That's a great, great essay. Not a great. An Everybody should be reading it. So those of you listening, read, read What is Capitalism? It's a fantastic essay. And then on comes Ta-Nehisi Coates, just sort of denigrating the American dream, denigrating America, saying that America was built on, that somehow America was intrinsically racist, imperialistic, unjust, that, it, that the American dream itself was a fabrication 
um, built by white people, that it was built on the exploitation of blacks, leaving out the, the immigrant dream, leaving out the dreams of black Americans who had made it under very adverse conditions during segregation, um, leaving out the untold stories of millions of black Americans in, and immigrants who had come here and not seen, you know, bigotry, but seen America line whose pavements were lined with gold, taking up a little bit of that gold. And in the book, I tell, we have overcome, I tell the story, not just of America's greatness. This is a new book, which is now on, available on Amazon, both in a Kindle and a hardcover edition. Yeah, that's right. You guys can go to Amazon. It's called We Have Overcome an Immigrant's Letter to the American People. Here's, here's a cover. Oh, there we go. Good, good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just marketing homework. That's good. <laughs> and I, you know, I really wanted to, to, to take Tana Hisikot's son because he, I, I found it very offensive that this country that I love so much and this great republic that has been a beacon of hope and inspiration that I, in Rand's spirit, consider to be the most, and in the book I explain why I take America to be the most moral and the greatest country on the face of the earth. I have a chapter called The Moral Meaning of America, that he was really spitting in the face of one of my values, which is rational, not some sort of bromidial, mindless love for this country, but a rational love for this country. And I thought he had to be stopped. And I also thought that he was bad for race relations. You know, he was sort of demonizing all white people as being racist, and um, which I thought was a collectivist view of looking at uh, what Rand would, Rand would call this biological collectivism. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and sort of just demonizing people because of this color of their skin without knowing anything about the untold ways in which millions of whites had fought for the emancipation of blacks during slavery, during the civil rights movement, and to sort of just conflate the actions of racists with skin color. I thought this was bad. So I, I, I heard him on television one night sort of just going at it against America. And I thought, this is ridiculous. And I wrote the article. Okay. Interestingly, it was rejected by so many magazines and commentary picked it oh, up. Wow. And, then, and then within sort of like four hours of it being published, it went completely viral. And sure. I, got a, I got a call from my publisher now, um, Bombardier Books, which is an imprint of Simon Schuster. And they said, we want you to write this book. <laughs> Good.